Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, guys, we are live. It's episode 259 of the Shooter's Mindset. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Co-host joining me, Jennifer. What's going on, Jen? Hey, everybody. Greg Cannon's in the house. Hey, everyone. Guest star of the hour, junior shooter sensation, the new breed of shooters, Bryson Allen. Hey, What's going on, Bryson? I didn't know you were as young as you were. I swear I was talking to you like you were a grown 42-year-old man. I try to be. And then, well, no, you don't want to be 42-year-old man. You want to stay maybe about 21 the rest of your life. Right? And then I see, I've seen videos of you shooting, but, I, you know, you really can't. Sometimes you just can't tell, you know? Yeah. I'm not shooting a video. small person. I'm 6'3 and 17. So. That's why. <laughs> there it is. Um, so uh, we're going to be talking to him more about um, – Cobalt Kinetics, which uh, not only is he sponsored by, um, but he's also kind of got a lot of the in on the new products coming from them. So we'll hit those later on during the show. Uh, show sponsors here. We got them short and sweet. Uh, folks over at GSL Technology Suppressors. Uh, that's GSLTechnologies.com. Uh, if you're in the market for any suppressor needs, they, they got what you need. Check them out um, over at GSLTechnology.com. All right. Uh, any questions that uh, you have live? If you're watching on the YouTube side of things, top right-hand corner, you can join that conversation over there. We'll screen them, get them out live throughout the show. Also, if you're on the Shooter's Mindset Facebook page, there's a post that went up, probably pinned somewhere towards the top. If you prefer to use Facebook page, you can comment below that. We'll get them out live throughout the show. Okay. Uh, obviously, the shootersmindset.com. Keep up with your live Shooter's Mindset shows. Um, we're probably going to be doing a lot of updates here coming soon to the website probably going to be trying to transfer kind of move these more to a podcast uh format which pretty much we're going to rip the audio from the show upload it as a podcast we got some early stages of the patreon kind of account very early stages i'm i've got it set up but i just want to work learn my way more around the website and how to do things and how to delete thing you know i mean just know the interface of the site a little bit better before i really start pushing that stuff uh obviously keep up with our shop blogs all that over at the shooters mindset.com all right all right bryson for those who are unfamiliar with you tell us a little bit more about yourself and uh what got you into competitive shooting well basically um uh, my name is bryce now i'm 17 um i started competitive shooting about three years ago um when i first started shooting in general um, kind of got started like most people with a Red Rider BB gun and uh, just out there shooting in a field and slowly started getting in firearms, um, you know, little Marlin 22s and uh, started shooting a little bit faster and faster every time and wanted to be more competitive with it. And I ended up shooting um, the primers out of spent shotgun shells and just kept doing it and getting faster with it and wanted to compete against other people. Um, got into USPSA from there, just by some friends of ours. And with USPSA, ton of fun. And kind of got tired because there was nothing new for me. It was always the same paper, same steel. And then 3-Gun was introduced to me. And it's, it's been a ride since then. So I've been shooting 3-Gun for about two years now. Yeah, so you started at what age? Was it 15, 16? Yeah, about 15 when I first started. Yeah. There we go, man. I started, what, 21, something like that, 22? So We're not talking about what age I started this at. Right. <laughs> Do not ask. Yeah, Greg, what age you started this thing? Uh, hey, Jen, what, what, what did you say? <laughs> I, I said don't ask. What I, part of don't ask did you not hear? Oh, uh, I had you on mute. Sorry. Um, let's see. What am I calling? 30. I was like 26. No. Stop. 26. There we go. Yeah, I was, All right. I was pretty old for starting out. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, this, I mean, you see this wave. I mean, there's uh, another young fellow too, that another junior shooter that, I mean, these guys are really kind of taking over the game. You see the kind of these guys, the maxes, the J. I mean, these guys are still on top of the game, but then all of a sudden these junior shooters are kind of like giving them a run for their money, if not winning these matches. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've seen them like probably years ago at like these MGM junior camps and all these kind of like the kid looked like he was like eight years old. You're like, OK, well, you never see him again. And then, oh, there he is winning area six and winning all these area matches. And then, boom, winning three gun nation. And it's like, you know, I mean, the van, the, the 
the resources towards getting these younger shooters involved has been expanding and you can kind of see them kind of the new wave coming in. I think Bryson and there's some other, there's plenty other great junior shooters out there that are really kind of like, Whoa, this dude came out of nowhere. Yeah. It's like, we got a, uh, my, my little buddy Max coming up next week or the week after on the show, 11 years old and multiple grandmasters. What? Yeah. I think three in, in a uh, steel challenge. Okay. There you go. Kids on He's fire. all kinds of fast, yeah. Mm-hmm. Crazy stuff, man. Yeah, that's at 11 years old, man. I don't know. I had no, I don't know what I was even thinking at 11. It wasn't about guns or any getting into it, I tell you that. Well, what else we got? You're shooting over there at, the, what are you, in the Carolinas, right? Shooting over at, the, what's the local club, Clinton House? or Clinton House is the local club, and they are just starting up three gun matches again this year. And it started in the pistol side of things. Um, now obviously the three gun thing, you started in tech ops. You recently made a switch to open division. How's that been? Why the, why the division change and how's the learning curve? Um, honestly, when I switched to open, it was a huge change for me. It was going from like star car racing to a complete drag race. It's no longer, you know, low drag or anything like that. It's go fast and that's it. It's there's nothing that holds you back whatsoever between the pistol, the shotgun, the rifle, everything's go fast. Um, the biggest thing that I noticed with it is it's more of a gear fight than it is actually shooting the competition, you know, trying to shave off time here, there you're fighting with, you know, should I use a sandbag here, bipod, all this different gear. And everything is so much different where, you know, quad loading, you can candy cane loads, and now with a shotgun, you've got 20 round mags where you can stack your load, slug, bird, everything like that. It's a whole new challenge setting up for stages. Yeah. Yeah, the gear stuff that's oh in three gun is always getting kind of you know, everybody says, Well, bring bring what you got, run what you brung. And obviously that's a great thing to get people involved, but then you do see all the gear and you get caught up in it, and then then there's somebody a new company brings out something else. That's some go fast or gives you that advantage. Yeah. And you're always chasing gear. I mean, some would say, hey, you don't need to chase it. Just drive fire with what you got and bring it. And I'm sure you can can overcome some of these gear changes or advantages. But who knows? I'm always chasing the gear, right? I think it's fun. You definitely can and just start with what you have. But when you have all the gear that you want and you've tried and it works for you, it there's nothing that's easier than doing that stuff. Yeah, you got some pretty, pretty flashy toys right behind you. I can see a, a dissident arm shotgun. I heard now this is a, this is their, this is their catchy thing. All right, they'll show these guys will be at a match just randomly sometimes, or they're shooting, right? Mm. Or they might have something set up, and they'll invite everybody to come shoot their shotgun. Come on down, ammo's on us. Come out and shoot it. And then you're you're kind of addicted to it, and you want one. Oh yeah. For sure. Was, was that the case with you? Or, I mean, you're, you're sponsored by them too, or how that kind of happened? I am sponsored by them. And it was actually uh, my good friend, Mike Sexton, who was at a match and he was running his gun. And I said, Hey, Mike, can I try it? He said, Yeah, go for it. And it was yeah. over. There, there was no, <laughs> no going back. It's like he hands me a mag with 20 rounds of bird shot and you can just rip through it in a couple seconds. Um, I set my Benelli down. I was like, all right, I'm done. I'm exactly done. why I've never picked one up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and is that what kind of guided you into open, uh, making that decision to move? Kind of. That was, that was a big part of it. Um, the other thing was it's, it's just growing so much now. I kind of wanted to get in something that was a little bit faster paced. And, you know, you got a lot of the big dogs switching to open. And I wanted to run with them because, you know, I, I want to go up against some of the best people out there and you learn and get better by doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Some of the best people are kind of, I mean, I won't say, I mean, there's, you got your top co- level competition in any division you shoot in, but you know, when I was, I mean, I got my open gun and then I, as soon as people are like, dude, you know, you're, you're never going to win or whatever. Cause you got, you got Max, you got this guy, you got, you know, even on the local scene. I mean, that that's the kind of the national world scene, right? Going up against those guys. But you even got the local scene. Everybody, you know, $4,000, $3,800 open guns with the nice flashy rigs, and they're going fast. 
you got to keep up with them dudes. Yeah, exactly. And it's just like, you know, locally, one of the big guys in open that we have all the time is Mike Sexton and mm -hmm. he shoots fast and going up with him is like, you know, it's tough and going against everybody else. I mean, 90% of the people and my buddies locally are all going open and they all shoot really fast. Jared Nelson, Michael Willis, all those guys. Um, you know, it's fun to go head to head with somebody and, and shoot as fast as you can. And you learn better, even if you lose, um, you're, you're learning your strengths, your weaknesses and what you have to work on. Yeah, I agree. Do you have the X ring channel here in the, in the chat? He says, what's up, Bryson? Good to see you on the show. He's and I mean, one of those guys that I go head to head with. Yeah. I mean, that's where I've seen this, what we're going to, which, which kind of perfectly leads us into our next kind of question here. Um, I've seen this cobalt because I'm subscribed to the X-Ring channel, obviously, but scrolling through my feed and I see this cobalt open gun and I'm like, dude, what, the, what is that thing? You know, looks straight out of a, like some futuristic movie or something, right? Yeah. I'm like, I didn't know cobalt's in the pistol game. Yeah, it's definitely, this is something brand new for this year. Um, this is the cobalt kinetics primus. It's their open division 2011. Um, this is the first of the open pistols or 2011s from them. Um, basically, this was designed for me or three gun this year. It's chambered in nine millimeter. Everything on it is what is known for cobalt. So everything's aluminum. Everything's hand fit, handmade. Um, the grip is by Chile, uh, Chile Custom Gunworks. The frame is by Chile Custom Gunworks. And everything else is cobalt. Um, so they've done some unbelievable stuff to redesign their own 2011 and basically make a pistol version of the rifle. So everything from the compensator to your grip, your trigger, um, a lot of the fine stuff on it, they pay a lot of attention to detail. Yeah, I mean, that thing is, I mean, we've seen, I've seen my fair share of open guns, but that thing is kind of wicked, wicked design on that thing. Yeah, it's, it's basically a whole new animal. I mean, there's 2011s on the market right now for open and limited, but this is something that's truly space gun. And that's why it's, you know, it's pretty clear to tell that it's a cobalt because it matches up with the rifle super easy. It really does. The, the space gun is the best word you could use to describe anything that they make, and that thing is crazy. I'm surprised it doesn't have a USB port on it somewhere or something. <laughs> Yeah, like it, it, it doesn't shoot actual ammo. It's like it, it's just like lasers, laser beams, and you have to charge it at the end of the night if you use it in the match <laughs> in the morning, in order for it to work again. Uh, yeah, John, if we get you one of those, would that get your hunger back for some three gun action? What do you think? Maybe now that I'm out of school, I might have time. <laughs> there we go. So we get then we got to get our open shotgun, and that's that's too expensive. Uh, it depends. It's it's yeah. all. You get what you pay for. You get a good dissident arm shotgun, and you won't ever have to worry about it. Boom. There we go. I can imagine that plunge. I tried it one time. Yeah. <laughs> I, bought, I bought myself, a, what was it, a Vepper 12 from, like, a pawn shop. I'm like, all right, things cheap enough, right? Six, what, five, six hundred dollars, whatever. Let's call <laughs> up, you know, Mike over at Dissident Arms and all that stuff, and Obviously, we know them pretty good, so we, you know, we got it. We got a pretty good deal, but the, still, the, the price tag was like, eh, it wasn't the best time for me to take the plunge at that time. Um, so, but that was that was my one shot at getting an open shotgun. It's, it's definitely a plunge that you have to commit to. Once you <laughs> go there, it's it's over. I mean, there's mm -hmm. no, you can't really step back. And that was my thought with switching to open is, yeah, I'll keep all my, you know, tack offs gear and I can switch back whenever I want to, but I'm never going to switch back. Cause I've shot, you know, <laughs> I shot a couple matches with it and I'm like, man, there's, there's nothing like it. You, you have to slow down to go to tack ops and I don't want to slow down anymore. You just want to go fast. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. I'm you just want to go fast. That's all up. Lobby. That's, that's the way you go, man. That's it. It looks good on camera and no one knows the hits. It doesn't matter. Do it for uh, the gram. Absolutely. The gram. But there talk to us a little bit more about this uh, Cobalt Open Pistol. It, when is it available? Is it available? 
what price tag can one expect and what features is different really on it? So it is available to the public as we speak. Um, this isn't something that's going to be in stock all the time, like an off the shelf, call us up and we can hand you one. Um, a lot of it's going to be custom to you. So you're going to have different grip options, different optic options, all that stuff. Um, basically, you've got one head gunsmith over there, and I worked with him a lot to design this pistol for me. And, you know, I've got basically bear paws for hands. So we had to work a little bit to change how we mounted the gas pedal and everything on the gun um, for me. And they can adjust that to every shooter. So you call them up, talk to them about the different things that you want on it. And just, you know, even little things too, like having a um, rail for a flashlight or something for night matches. Something you don't usually see on 2011s or especially open guns. But that's yeah. something you can get with Cobalt is you have those custom options. Um, price point on them. Unfortunately, right now, price points between five and 6000 um, Granted, this isn't your off-the-shelf 2011. This is a hand-fit, hand-built 2011, um, and everything on it is ready to go. As soon as you get it, you can take it out and you can go to work. There's no tuning or break-in process necessary. It's ready to go. All right, and what I have 6K right now. What what's the turnaround time on on something like that? Turnaround you know, is 45 to 60 days. That's not bad. Yeah, compared to all. other manufacturers, I mean, you can have that gun in your hand in two months or less. It's it's pretty well worth it. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know, I've heard of 12 months year wait on some custom 2011 to you know manufacturers out there. So two months is freaking up. That's that's a walk in the park right there. Yeah. That's like crazy fast. That's like fast food. And yeah. The other thing is the fact that it's custom so that everything is happening in that time. And chances are the gunsmith, the head guy over there, um, Dave Lake, he's been working in the revolver industry for years. Um, and he basically switched over to Cobalt and builds these guns. And he can do pretty much anything you want. So any of the slide cuts on the pistol... If you want to change it, you want to do something a little bit different, they'll change it for you. Um, you really have all those options. So you're getting a gun that's almost custom to you. And almost every single gun, if you wanted to, could be your own, and it could be your own style of firearm. So everything on it is available to be changed. Dude, that comp looks like the rifle comp, too. Yeah. That they have. I actually grabbed one to put next to it um, for comparison, but it's really super close so yeah. and both you know the comp on the rifle and the comp on the pistol is unbelievably flat mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. all right you got some videos where can people see videos of you shooting it because right now you what are you pretty much the only guy who has that right now right now i'm the only one that has this pistol so all right so they can check you out what on the social medias to see videos of you shooting it Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff is at Bryson Shoots. Bryson Shoots. All right. So if you guys are in the game market for one of these, you know, hey, I would just like to be the second person to own one of those. Just to say I was the second person to own it. Well, I think right. the second person that's got one on the way is actually John Razzo. Um, all right. Third person. then. All right. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a team shooter for Cobalt as well. So we both were the open guys on the team. So he's out there right. in Arizona. Yeah, I know. I know, Bryson. You watch the show because uh, we, you know, we've seen you comment, you know, on the live feed all the time. But I mean, we've done a lot of pushing uh, with uh, Cobalt Kinetics. Obviously, there was. Uh, I'm assuming I'm gonna call them just an older team, Cobalt Kinetics, with Keith Garcia and Rick Birdsaw. We've had Keith on uh, when he was with Cobalt. We've had uh, uh, Rick on. We've done some. I don't know, two years in a row. I think the first year when Cobalt was over at SHOT Show, um, we did a video with the team. I think Nick was on there at the time and Kalani Laker and all them dudes. We And then the following year, we did more with them. So, I mean, I mean, we did a lot of pushing for them. And then, obviously, you're the kind of that new kind of up-and-coming guys that are going to take it over for Cobalt, right? Yeah, pretty much. Who's, who's on the team right now? Right now, um, we've got me, John Razzo. Um, there's another guy in Arizona who we just picked up. 
We also picked up um, Ray Helms, who also has the X-Ring channel. And then um, kind of secretly, but we're about to announce that we just picked up Sydney Rockwell as well. Yay, mm. Sid! So that's why Sydney shared the show. You know, no, I'm kidding. Now we've had six <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's the only reason why. No, that's not the only reason. Um, but yeah, I mean, dude, that's awesome. I, I like the direction there, getting some of the young gunners in there. I think that's that's going to be many, many years of success for Cobalt. Uh, what else we got from them? Uh, any Some would say, well, what about Limited? What about the other divisions uh, since they're in the handgun game now? As far as Limited guns go, um, we have a design for a Limited gun, and that is going to be – we've got one that's in prototype right now. It'll probably be done in the next week or two, of what I'm being told, and that's a Limited 2011, basically the same thing, super similar cuts. Um, it's also got the Chile um, E2 grip or the Chile traditional grip. And we're working with Chile and doing a custom design. So the rifle grip is basically going to be the same thing on your pistol. Ooh. You can get Sweet. a grip for your pistol that matches almost exactly your rifle grip, um, which is great because you can pick up both guns and it feels pretty much exactly the same. Um, both of them are going to be aluminum or steel. Same thing as the rifles. So you've got that same feel and that, that same handleability. Man, I don't know. Someone has, someone's really thinking over there at Cobalt, man. They're they're doing a lot of design and and doing everything they can to make it happen for anything that anybody wants. Because I mean, you think of the rifle a few years ago, right? And you're like, I mean, there was nothing like. The AR market, it's like everybody comes out. It's like new for Shot Show 2019. We now have a 308 gun. It's like there was nothing. There was nothing innovative about it. There was nothing. You know what I mean? They would, or we have now we have a billet lower receiver on our gun. It's like these dudes kind of came out and did the whole thing where you you know how it loads and how you drop the bolt and all these kind of flashy ideas i mean you haven't seen that kind of innovation in the ar game for quite a bit yeah and that's one thing with cobalt is they're changing the market both with 2011s and with rifles um from everything on the rifle being well aluminum you know stock included grip everything um it could all be seen as pretty much one piece of aluminum that's all done in-house um it it sets it apart and then like you were saying you know, the, the car system and the dual drop system, all that stuff. Um, that's another reason why there's different shooters this year on the team. Um, like Ray Helms, one of the guys on the team, he shoots factory division. He's got a rifle this year with the car system in it, which basically is where his rifle will drop the mag out when it's empty. He puts a new mag in, that has loaded rounds. It's going to go ahead and chamber around without him having to press any buttons. Um, and he's doing that for factory division because of the capacity limitations. So for me, I don't really need to have it, but I have the dual drop system, which is the forward assist on both sides. So that's also your bolt release. Oh. They just keep designing everything and changing it up um, every little bit that they can to make it better. Greg, you don't know about the this rifle? So I... I... I knew some things about it. I knew about the the auto dropping mags. I didn't, and when I saw the name, what is it, dual drop? Yeah. Um, I thought that that was the other thing where it would drop the mags out for you, but the forward assist and bolt release in one is is sweet. And that's one thing that kind of sets the rifles as fully ambidextrous, um, because most rifles only have their bolt release on the one side, or you can rack the charging handle. And this is where you're right-handed. All you got to do is lift your thumb up, which is right over your safety, mm -hmm. or left-handed, same thing. It's right here. So it makes it so much faster. Especially yeah. unloaded starts and stuff like that. Oh yeah, for sure. It's crazy That's, fast. You're gonna see. You're gonna see that tenth of a second advantage there, easy. So, not that forward assist or something that you really need for malfunctions per se in the competition world, but I don't know. I was about to say, besides for that one time. I had to use mine at the last thing I shot. Yeah. There's always those times too. Yeah, I was glad to have forward assist. What happened? I heard the forward assist is useless on guns. What's going on with this? 
Well, what someone happened? may have borrowed her rifle the weekend before and put about 500 rounds through it and didn't do anything to it before they gave it back to her. Maybe that might have happened. That doesn't sound like what that doesn't sound like much though. Like what 500 rounds and what was it well, just running last dry? Stage of the day, it would not feed. It would the bolt would not go all the way into battery, and so I'm like, flam, had to like Ford assist it to get it in battery. Yeah, well, it, it was go. about it was about 25 seconds of jams if you added it all up because it was yeah. more than one. Yeah, Ouch. it's great. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's it's so good many, times. There's a lot of <laughs> rifle manufacturers that are just not even putting on a forward assist on on their upper receivers anymore because of this. But I've have heard stories like this, like, oh no, I used it that, that one time at band camp and it it saved my life. <laughs> it, it saved my life. I couldn't have shot without having a forward assist because nothing would have gone into battery. <laughs> yeah. 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 It happens. Well there you go. That's why you need a forward assist, folks. Yes. All right. All right. Uh, discount corners here. We try to save you some money from some great companies who support the show. Uh, Jen, you start us off with this stuff. What do you got? You can get 10% off at carbonarms.us on carbon arms, shotgun, shell caddies, ratchet belts, all that stuff at carbonarms.us with the code TSM10. You can also get 10% off of um, the Shooter's Mindset store where we have TTI products and <coughs> Gear Nation t-shirts, all that stuff with Gen TSM10. Um, and you can also get 10% off at Under Industries if you message them and mention the Shooter's Mindset and how awesome we are. You have to say we're awesome. Just saying. Go on, Greg, what do you got? I have you can save 10% off at Overwatch Defense with the code CANON10. Um, you can shoot them an email, give them a call. You get an awesome Cerakote job. They also sell any, pretty much any sort of parts or guns you can imagine. There we go. Um, what do I have on my end here? I don't know. Uh, dot com TSM10. Save you 10% off website-wide at Terran Tactical Innovations. We have uh, UMTactical.com. TSM10 for there, too. They got a lot of holsters, a lot of AR parts over at UM Tactical, so check those out. Um, we talked about carbon arms. Man. My list gets short, shorter and shorter every week now. That's all I got. Bryson, what do you got for our discounts? You can get 10% off at Kenzie's Optics with code Bryson Shoots. Um, you can get 20 bucks off at Clear Image Solutions at using the code Bryson Shoots or send them a message via social media, and they may be able to hook you up a little bit more. Um, I can also get you 20% off at Cobalt Kinetics if you shoot me a uh, message via Instagram or Facebook. And um, I'll give you guys a code through there. And that's pretty much it. Wow. Oh. 20% off. That's pretty damn good. 20% off a 6K open gun is a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Just so, saying. Or a rifle. Or maybe you can, like, pre-order a limited gun or something. You can. Ooh, limited gun. Definitely can. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? I think we're good at, for discounts, right? Any live that came in before we kind of move on to this current event in the shooting industry? Oh, Lord. Current Sid event. wants to know, isn't Bryson famous from the great mudslide incident of the 2018 Pro-Am? Possibly. That may have been me. She may have been the one behind the camera. <laughs> and the video is where? It's all over Instagram and Facebook. Um, it was also <laughs> announced at the end of the competition before the prize table that I was to be named Mud Boy. So. Mud Boy. Somebody somebody help me out here. Post post the link to this up in our uh, our post up on the shooter's mindset so I can watch and laugh. I mean uh yeah Sid, post the link for us, girl. Oh, You're sitting at you. home. I know you can do it for me. I am so happy to look like a fool in front of everybody. <laughs> that's, that's literally what I do every time I shoot. It's okay. Oh, it's, it's great. I gained followers. It was worth it. Live on the followers from being stupid, it's completely worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what do we got? Uh, uh, we got another one here. A live question from uh, Mr. Mason it says, With a thousand dollar cap, what is each of your favorite out the box pistol for beginner competition? Thousand dollar cap. Um, I'll start this one off. 
I would say the good old trusty Glock 34 or Glock 35 of some sort. Um, and that leaves you enough money to probably get your holster set up and your belt. And you can probably do some minor work to the gun and still be under a thousand and probably have some match money uh, to go sign up for some majors. What do you I'd got say the now? same. Get a Glock, like a 34. Like I shoot a 17 long, which is about the same as a 34. It's just a little longer. Get a Glock it, and get a good trigger in it. It's so universal because you can play three gun with it. You can play USPSA and IDPA with it. You can play Steel Challenge. You can do every almost every pistol sport that I know. And you can beat it all to hell, and it still runs. And uh, easy to you know maintenance is low. Mm-hmm. Parts are do it yourself essentially. Cannon, any 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 change in opinion? So, as somebody who shoots a Glock for competition, um, shoots multiple Glocks for competition, I'm going to change this one up a little bit, and I'm going to say the Canic. Dude, that's that's like that's like a 700 cap limit. But did, yeah, that makes sense. What, what, what did he say? Did he say? He said he said a thousand, but yeah, no, that that's perfect. Yeah, you can go there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the, it's the under Canic, it. Yeah, the Canic's still under it, um, and you know that. For me, I did not have a thousand dollar limit getting into it um, at the time, and I was very familiar with Glocks. And that's the biggest thing for me is I, you know, like I said, I was 26 when I got into competitive shooting. I purchased my first handgun on my 21st birthday, um, and it was a, a Glock 19. I was very familiar with it, and actually, what I started with. Um, so I wanted to stay with Glock because I had mags and holsters and all sorts of stuff that would interchange, and I was just very used to it. But if I was starting from scratch, I can get a carry optics yeah. gun with base pads. Because he said out of the box is the biggest thing. Like, yeah, I could build a Gucci Glock, but out of the box, under a grand, I'd go Canic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Bryson, any change in opinion? I know you ran Glock too. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna stick with the Glock on this one because you can do a couple of modifications to it and definitely stay under a grand have a good holster set up and everything and be able to run it in a match yeah and a 34 is you know if we're talking about not doing anything just out the box ready i mean there's the canics a good one i mean the glock you can run that thing right out the box i mean maybe just change the sights maybe you know that's the only thing that i say is is pretty pretty poop on a 34 other than other than that um you get the new ones and run the mos if you want to go carry optics um, you know, you got some competitors up there. Maybe the Walter Q5 match, the PPQ, not the steel frame, because the steel frame puts you over that thousand mark. But you can get the PPQ match for under under a G, with a nice trigger, ready to rock. So that's a, probably another contender. There's probably others that are slipping our minds, but man, I think you can never kind of. I did like that PPQ. I I um, shot it, yeah. and their their match. Yeah, I, they got some good guns. I mean, you can probably get away with uh, even a single stack. I mean, you can probably even go 1911 for under for under a stack note, maybe like a Springfield or something. Uh, I, don't know. I don't know if you could do that for three gun. Maybe for USPSA, if you yeah, shot but a single see, that's, stack. Yeah, but... that's what the Glock always wins because like you can always compete with that thing, and the 1911 mm-hmm. is not going to really. You're forcing single stack, and then three gun. You're kind of like not, you know. <laughs> you're, you're like you're that old guy. Manager. No one wants to be on your squad. <laughs> Ouch. This, this yeah. guy's gonna run out of mags. Come on. I'm just okay. Can you shoot? Can you go heavy? Does that even make sense? You could like go heavy, shoot. but you gotta have a 308 and a pump shotgun. Yeah. And if you're blasting yeah. out 308 like that, uh, budget is not a thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's no longer. Yeah. Necessary. Yeah. All right. Uh, current events in the shooting industry that that is a hot topic. It seems, especially in the PRS world. Um, yesterday is brought to uh, my attention, and it was all over the feed. Uh, Bryson, I don't even know if you know much about this. Uh, Prime Ammunition um, and Norma, whatever, you know, that those two companies supposedly are in some beef or are going through some type of catfight, it seems, according to yeah. the internet. Yeah, pr- Prime and Ruag. Um, it's a... Uh... It's Ray, a lot out there. On, on yeah, Greg, you actually read like I, 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 I give you a clap. All right, 
You were able to read like a hundred pages of this. this I read like, a hundred page of lawyer BS um, last night, and uh, I'm very tired now. I got but, through a half of half of the first page, and I was like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> he said that's too many words. That's you I, no. And then the way they word shit, it's like, dude, it's not you know. You know what the best part of this whole thing is? I stayed up late and read all that crap last night. Um, and then I get home today, and they went on uh, on the sniper side with, with Frank and basically talked through the whole thing. Um, and what it sounds like is it sounds like uh, Rue, you know, Prime was a little bit behind in making payments, to generalize it in simple terms. Um, Rue... And them kind of came to a new agreement of like, hey, this is how you're going to pay. They they came up with some some new amendment to their agreement. They started paying on it. Um, and a lot of people are saying that Prime owes Ruag like seven hundred and something thousand dollars, but it sounds like Prime already paid them two hundred and eighty of it. I don't know. Um, we'll uh, we'll see where this goes in court because um, based off of it, there's no like firm that that I saw. There's nothing like black and white of this person didn't do this exact thing based off of what I read. Yeah. So the gist of the story, if you guys know nothing about it is, uh, Ruag was making, there is there prime was essentially like the middleman, right? Um, their ammo was not manufactured. It depended on another company to manufacture their, their ammo with head stamps for prime and boxing for prime. And they mailed it out to the consumer who purchased it through prime. So now you don't have your main supplier, which means there's a temporary, like, out of business for prime ammunition, essentially, because they have nobody to make that ammo for them to give to their customers. So obviously there's two lawsuits going on between the two companies. Prime is temporary, temporarily out of business. But the thing that kind of gets me about it and with the little details that are out there, and I expect, because since I know people on both sides, we know the folks over at Prime, I know the folks of some folks over at Ruag. Um, I've heard both sides of the story, so um, I'll keep kind of my opinion because you know we'll just see how it plays out. And not all the details are out because obviously you can't you can't say a lot when you have lawyers involved in this thing, so you can't really give all the goods away from what it is. But when a company is on a prepaid plan. You know what I mean? Like you're on pre, you know, that kind of says something. Usually you're on a prepaid plan when you mess something up. Yeah. And it, you know what I mean? Like I ordered, I ordered a bunch of shit and didn't pay you, Greg. And then you're like, well, you're going to wag your finger at me and said, now you, sir, are on prepaid and you pay me first. I'll send you the product. Yeah. And on listening to the podcast with Frank today, apparently the way that went was a, a phone call that said, Hey, this stuff that you, you know, you guys are planning on buying from us. You have 24 hours to send us payment in full or else we're going to sell it as Norma or whatever, whatever Ruag brand it was and not, you know, just not, not polite business practices is, is what it sounded like. Right. Yeah. So there it is in kind of a short and sweet uh, version of it. You have two sides. Uh, you kind of, you know, uh, really Ruag Norma hasn't said anything about this. Uh, really, I expect that to change here shortly. Um, but um, we got a lot of people on the PRS games standing with Prime, right? There is what you got, John? <laughs> he just tagged us in the video. Do you do your own laundry or does your mother have to wash this stuff? So I usually do, but um, I actually use the puddle outside of uh, Rock Castle Shooting Center and got it, <laughs> got it cleaned up pretty well. I don't know anything about washing anything off outside of Rock Castle. <laughs> oh, my God. You're watching it? Yes. That, <laughs> By he the tagged way, this us is in it. No, this hold on. is the, the mud video that we were The mud to fest. He, he tagged you in it too on Instagram. That's oh, hilarious. That's I'm, I'm on Facebook. So this rifle right here got a bath, a hosed off in front of Rock Castle's, you know, the hotel there. There's a hose and I hosed it off. It was so muddy. It was horrible. 
Yeah, I got lucky enough that this was our last stage of the day, and everybody decided that we were going to go out to lunch. <laughs> so I didn't get the chance to wash off. So I went to lunch covered in mud, not <laughs> there was mud all over my face. Um, and it, it was pretty cool because when I got home, um, I had a package from Hyperfire, and they said, you might need a new hat. Here you go. Because my old one was now brown. And that is hilarious. I was sit like I was like, what did he tag me in? And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so if y'all go to his Instagram page, it's on there from like uh, last August. I'll you can scroll through. Before. Yeah, it's pretty hilarious. It's <laughs> epic. Yeah. Wow, that's like a slip and slide in the mud. Yeah, I'm. I'm one of those people who I try to be very professional and I enjoy and I'm very serious about what I do. That was a professional but slide. You'll you'll catch me a lot of times, you know, talking to targets if I miss them or if I can't hit them or I'll, you know, coach myself. So I'm, I'm usually yelling, telling myself to slow down or, you know, making weird noises or grunts. That's that's typically me. I make weird noises and grunts too, but it's just because I'm older than you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. That's for sure. I can, I, I hear it's that. Pretty funny. Uh, what else we got here? Um, any upcoming matches, events, or goals for you coming up, Bryson? Um, I do have a bunch of upcoming matches. The one that's coming soon um, is going to be the Clinton House Three Gun, which is actually being put on by one of my Cobalt teammates, Ray Helms. Um, He's putting on that match, and that's going to be a pretty fun one. It, it's a local match, but a lot of people would call it a major just because of the size of the facility and the size of the stages and everything. Um, you know, we've got a rifle spinner at 100 yards and then a pistol spinner in the same stage. So Oof. it's going to be it's going to be a pretty challenging match um, to be to be in three gun. Um, I've got that, and then I think it's the three of five. JP PCC match. Um, it's one of the PCC matches up in Indiana this year. Um, and that'll be actually my last match as a junior. I'm shooting, shooting the match on my birthday, and then I'm also ROing it. There we go. Now, I can't remember in 3-Gun, is it when you turn 18, you are no longer a junior, or the end of the season? When you turn 18. Most of the okay. time, it depends on the people setting up the match. Okay. Most of the time, it's once you turn 18. I couldn't remember if they changed it over at the season mark or on your actual birthday. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's when you turn 18. Mm. There we go. Um, advice on, you know, I'm sure you get this, and I get this every once in a while. Um, got a lot more in the past, but adv advice on getting sponsorship, especially as a junior shooter. Um, what tips you have? The best thing that I would tell people, and I get that question a lot via social media, is just be yourself and you know promote the products that you use and love now. If there's something you're using and you love using it and it works well for you, um, there's nothing wrong with posting about it and letting people know about it. And the companies see that. Um, whether you know it or not or you don't think they're seeing it, companies are looking at it. They're liking what you're posting. They can tell that you're you're truly you know happy with their product and you know take time and let them reach out to you i would say but every now and then it's okay to reach out to them and say hey you know i love your product um is there anything i can do to work for you don't just don't keep it one-sided and think about just you because it's it's a part-time job you're you're working for companies to promote their product and they're working yeah. to help you yeah there you go I mean, that's sound advice. And honestly, you know, it takes uh, it takes some time. Don't you don't make one or two posts and a couple videos and then contact the company. You know, it takes – sometimes it takes time. You know, companies will see it and they'll continue seeing it. Sometimes they'll even reach out to you. Um, and there's a lot of people on Facebook that they never uh, – they never like a post. They never comment on a post. They're just one of those people who look – Watch and keep scrolling. And sometimes, you know, I've got contacted by them people like I don't even remember sending them a friend request. And they <laughs> happen to be 
Like, dude, yeah, I've been checking out your stuff. I'm like, what? I never, ever had any interaction with you on social media. We didn't even actually know we were friends. Well, said person now works for said company that's in some kind of position that can support you and you can support. And then there's the, there's the connection and boom, now we're working with such and such. Yeah. I had one of those situations with Cobalt. I actually had a guy friend me on Facebook, had no idea who he was. And, um, I was looking into Cobalt and then just a few weeks later, Cobalt reached out to me and said, Hey, you know, let's, let's talk. Um, mm -hmm. it's one of those things, just right time, right people. And you can get lucky that way. But it's, it's definitely, I think a lot of people think sponsorship is something super easy. And there's a lot of time and effort that goes into it. I spend probably a couple hours every match just letting people try the rifle and the, and the pistol. I mean, that's one thing if you see me in a match is I'll say, hey, if you want to try it, try the guns. It's you know, free ammo. Take it for a ride. Take it for a spin. Somebody's gun goes down. I've always got a backup with me that they can run just so that they're getting to try the product. They're getting something that helps them. And it's supporting shooters and even new shooters that matches. If it's their first match, I've got a full set of, you know, all the guns included. They can run in a match and just get them going, get them started. Uh, Jen, any, any advice on this? Or Greg, what do you got? Uh, probably the biggest thing I'd say is, like, be a be a good ambassador. Um, be a nice person. And th that's probably the biggest thing is you know a you know yes you got to look as you're you know there's a lot of people that aren't as great of shooters as they think they are, but they they win some matches that may or may not be very difficult, and they're like oh you know I'm entitled to this because you know I'm kicking ass with your product, but really. I don't think that's what the sponsors look for. They look for the person like you that's like, you know, hey, man, you know, check out this gun. Try this out. You know, oh, your gun's down here. Try mine. Oh, you have questions. Oh, you're a new shooter here. You know, squad with me. Um, those are the kind of people that people will look at for legitimate advice. And, you know, for, for me, um, you know, Jen's been shooting for longer than me. She was at one of my first matches, and she was that person. Like, legitimate, if you go and look out in my garage and I – gun cleaning cabinet it's full of lucas oil my first match she's like here try some lucas oil that'll fix your gun and she was watched by them i got that stuff all over the place and you know people like that that are approachable kind and willing to help new shooters because i had no freaking clue what i was doing i had a glock 19 and a circle holster Ooh, it yeah. was bad i didn't shoot my leg though i agree though i think it's uh, and us I'll, I'll be honest i struggle with it I, you know constantly i'm like oh like do I deserve to be a sponsored shooter? I'm not the top of the leaderboard. I'm not winning matches. Um, I hold my own, but I'm not, I, I'm not at the top. I'm not top 10 or anything like that. So I, I often will be like, Oh, I don't know if I should be sponsored, you know, and, and it does come down to, I think um, a lot, I think you can get a lot of bang for your buck with some mid pack shooters that are really good ambassadors that are really out there. Uh, a lot of the top shooters, they already have what they shoot. They already shoot what they want to shoot. They're not going to be swayed um, and and try different products. And they're not. There are some that are very approachable, but they're not all very approachable. So I think that it's a big difference if you have somebody that's approachable and is trying to help the new guy a lot. Maybe not as focused on their game because they're not you know in that race to win. So they have more time for that. Um, newer shooter, you know, to pull them aside and say, Hey, do it, you know, try it this way or whatever. I think it, I think that it helps a lot. And that new shooter is who they want to get because the new shooter is who is going to buy their product. And if you get the person as a new shooter buying the product, they're going to be loyal. They're going to stay with it. I mean, case in point, hyperfire. I yeah. tried a hyperfire back in 2014 and was like, Oh, I love this. And like, mm. I was brand new. Yeah. I was brand new to three gun, fell in love with the hyper fire. I loved that trigger. Well, I've bought every, ever since then, every rifle, I'm like, Nope, it has to have a hyper fire. I had a company that was sponsoring me and building me a rifle. And they're like, well, we want to put a Geisley in it. And I was like, yeah, that's cute. But I want a hyper fire. And they were like, <laughs> well, but we're going to, I have a deal on a Geisley. I'm like, well, okay, when I get it, I'm going to pull the Geisley out and put a hyper fire in it. Nothing against Geisley, but that's what I was, 
I liked it. I knew they were sponsoring matches. They had gotten me early and I was hooked and I was loyal to it. So I think getting the shooter when they're brand new is a, is a huge thing for companies. And I think some of the mid pack shooters that aren't as focused on trying to win the match and have that time to spend with a newer shooter and introduce them to things and share gear. Not that the top shooters can't do it, but I think there is value in the mid pack shooter that is going to do that. That's just my opinion. And that's one thing with Cobalt that they had a big conversation with all the shooters this year is like, we're not worried about, you know, if you go and win a match, that's not, you win a match and you're representing a company. That's great. It's great for the product. It's great for you. They're happy that you won the match. But just winning a match is not going to promote a product. It's going out there and being with the people, helping people, um, being personable. Um, like you said, it's it's key to do that kind of stuff. And it's, it's funny you say mention Hyperfire um, because they, they're they pretty well known for doing that. Um, and that's what all the sponsored shooters for Hyperfire, including myself, try to do. Is anybody who wants to try a competition trigger because – I would say one of the key components in competition, no matter what gun it is, is getting a good trigger. Um, mm -hmm. Having a drop-in trigger like that, that you can put in your rifle and just change the whole setup that much from one little piece is unbelievable. Um, and have a company that supports the sport. So they support matches, they support shooters. They're out there doing work for everybody, trying to make the sport better. And there's, you know, any of the guns that you'll see with me or on demo on demo tables at any of the matches I'm at, every single one of them is going to have a hyperfire eclipse in it. Because once you know, there's there's no going back. Like I think, yeah, I think with um, with competition shooters, getting a new shooter is key because you talk to the shooters that have been doing it a while and they have their gear set up how they want it and they don't want to try anything different. They want to shoot what they have. And, and not only that, but that new shooter, you know, let's say they come out to a match and, you know, they got their, they, they feel like they, their trigger needs to be improved. And what do they do? They go on Facebook and they go to, you know, blah, 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 Joe Bob's AR-15 group says, guys, I need a new trigger. Well, they may, you know, someone may say, hey, get this trigger because it's best for combat in Afghanistan. It's not what we're doing. All Everything that, that we do is so far outside of the norm from every other aspect of shooting. You know, you're not going to set up a comp gun the way you would for anything else. So competition to competition shooter is the best way to educate new shooters on the, on the best gear. And I know there's a lot of people that have done that, you know, they'll show up with a stock, blah, blah, blah. And then they'll go online and ask tacticaltimmy.com what to put on the gun. They come up back with a gun that after they dumped $500 into it, and it's not as good as it was the match before bone stock. And then it's like, hey, you should have bought, you know, this trigger instead of that trigger. You should have bought this optic instead of that optic. There's that's one thing with cobalts too, is when you get a cobalt, most of them will come with an AR gold trigger. And I've been really talking to the guys over there because everybody who buys one, 90% of the time they'll ask for it without the trigger. Just because <laughs> most of them are getting hyper fires because that's what they want in the gun. Um, you know, some people like AR Golds, so there's nothing wrong with them. But for me in particular, I've run a hyper fire for years. I've probably got 20 to 30,000 rounds on them in the past three years. And it, they're, they're really unbeatable to me. Yeah, they really are. And it's not only, you know, again, my trigger is a hyper fire in my AR. Um, and it's not even the fact that it's that trigger it sometimes it's that's just what you're used to so like for me i have a hyper fire in this gun and i'm in the process uh, in the process before i got hooked on prs um i was in the process of building a better three gun ar and it's like yeah i guess i need another another hyper fire for that because there's nothing else that'll ever put in one mm -hmm. yeah uh, there we go i mean there's so many ways that now it's uh, social media. Um, there's a lot of ways to kind of build uh, and get yourself seen. And like I said, I usually say, hey, friend, look out, friend some folks. You know, you know, the more people you're friends with, the more people you can get your stuff seen. You know, start start your athletes page, which I never got into. I just kind of did 
the, the shooter's mindset, which was kind of like just deliver the news, kind of. It was like an entertainment page. Like Ruger announces this, Smith & Wesson announces this. We try to be the first to share it and make our own original content from gun shows and stuff like that. And that kind of really helped me out. And uh, the YouTube thing is where it all started for me. I, just, I posted dumb. I mean, I was a sharpshooter in IDPA. This is D-class USPSA stuff. And um, <laughs> D, this is, you know, beginner level stuff. And I just posted videos and collabed with other YouTube guys and build a following. And then got to know some folks. And that's how it happened. I mean, I've been sponsored since then. I was a sharpshooter marksman in IDPA and had a, had a jersey full of some people. And I started local. I was local. Most of them were local companies. Might have been small gun, mom and pop gun shops, mom and pop products. I mean, Traction Grips was, um, you know, it was a, a super simple product. And tons of people have knocked it off since. It was a rubber texturized grip on your Glock and that company supported me. I supported that company and I started there and I mean, I can still probably reach out to that company today and slap their logo right back on my Jersey, have an agreement and still do it. And I still support them even though I don't choose running a fancy Jersey anymore. It's just because I'm just not into it like that anymore. And the, I feel free without <laughs> it. It's so funny to me. Like people get so upset over sponsorships and shooting and sponsorships and shooting are a company helping you out and you're helping them out. It's not like this whole like, oh, are you a pro or are you not a pro? I think that is so funny. There are maybe three to five shooters that are pro shooters. And the rest of us, unless you're 17, all have a job that we go through Monday through Friday <laughs> that fund our shooting habit on the weekends we're not making bank. Okay. So they just had the masters here and I was looking at, well, my son was, and I was like, what, let me see that. The master's purse, like the winner got 2 million, second place got 1 million and it went down from there. But like we looked down and like the person that got 50th got $28,000. The person that got like 35th got like 60 something thousand dollars. So, so Damn. the golfers, they're pro. They're making money on yeah, I need to, I need living to, on golfing. I need to play golf. None of us shooters are doing that. Like I said, there might be five. They're doing it. <laughs> Otherwise, the rest of us go to work Monday through Friday and complain about it all week until we get to the weekend and get to go shoot because we have a job that, that pays for it. And we should put on our jerseys, you know, wherever our place of employment is because that's what's really <laughs> that's sponsoring what's real it. sponsorship, yeah. So I think yeah. it's so funny for everybody to get so upset over sponsorships and this and that and who's pro and who's not pro and are you worthy to be pro? I mean, come on. Jen's none a pro us. in PR. I am not a pro and none you of are us are. Pro. pro. <laughs> Y'all shut up. I am top, not. Top three lady in the game, I think. <laughs> At one match. <laughs> top three lady in the game. That's Just one thing saying. too is even being 17 is – I work for my stuff. It's it's not just going to matches and oh hey let me just throw money at this that just goes in the wind. No, oh, I you know I'm just going to school and going to work and after that it's like all I have time for is dry fire and shooting. So if I'm not working and I'm not doing schoolwork, I'm shooting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and everybody thinks you know oh they're gonna you know I'm gonna get a jersey and just get free stuff. Like that is not at all how I look at it. it is I'm on my soapbox a little bit tonight. I need to get off of it, but it's not like that. It, to me, it's a partnership and it's looking at, you know, what you can do for that company. It's not just getting free stuff. Like you have to work. And sometimes I'm like, Oh, I don't want to make a Facebook post, but I need to make a Facebook post because you need to get the product out there for people. And it, it's more work than some people realize. I think anyway, I'm off my soapbox. Um, lastly here, uh, you talked about shooting a PCC match up and coming here, Bryson. What, uh, does Cobalt have a PCC offering? We do. Um, this is going to be, it's actually called the Pimped PCC. Um, and the reason for it is they've got a new program called the Pimp My PCC, which is basically if you have an existing, uh, pistol caliber carbine, you can send it in and they can basically rebuild it for you. Um, because they redesigned their pro buffer and pro brake for a PCC. So you're going to have the same brake that's on your rifle. 
and the same buffer system. Um, the buffer is completely different than the rifle. It's got a whole new baffle system and everything in it. Um, based on a lot of our testing, it's going to be one of the flattest, um, you know, not gas driven PCCs on the market. It's super crazy flat. Um, and this gun in particular, which is basically all cobalt because they don't have their own um, lower and upper yet, or nine millimeter, they're using Gibbs or Angstad arms. Um, it's a 13 and a 13.2 inch Hinden welded. Um, it's a it's a shorty PCC, but this thing is unbelievably accurate and flat. That's awesome. Well, the break is like three inches, so. Yeah. <laughs> The thing yeah. is sweet. What mags does it take? Glock mags. Sweet. And lastly, on your open pistol, is that just a non-major? Do they offer 38 supers, or is that up and coming? So this is actually non-minor, but they can do 38 super. They can do 40 cal. They can really do whatever you want. That's, that's part of the, the great thing of being all custom is it adjusts the, the caliber, um, all the different options and stuff. Like I said, for me, they had to basically fill – a gas pedal a giant to fit on the side of the gun. There goes a the cobalt break. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Um, but uh, yeah, so there you go. Uh, if you guys are in the market for maybe to upgrade your PCC, get into the open game, upgrade your rifle, maybe try something new, or just kind of hey, if you have. If you want to start out with some premium gear, uh, take a look at some of these offerings here from Cobalt Kinetics. Um, Hyperfire, all them folks here putting out great products that we talked about. Um, all worth a look, uh, indeed. So, and feel free and, to reach out if you have any questions because I can get you guys set up. Yeah. Uh, follow uh, Bryson Allen on uh, social media all across, uh, what is it, at Bryson Shoots if you're not. Liking the athletes page or all that stuff that they got going over there, be sure to give it a like. Uh, any live here before we wrap this one up? I'm good on my end. I'm good on my end. Uh, Lewis here just comments here. Uh, what do we have? Mr. Mason says, uh, big thanks on the $1,000 cap question. And we have Luis says, uh, good looking rifle as far as the Cobalt goes. Um, that kind of does it. And we can kind of wind this one here down the shout outs. Uh, Jen, what do you have? Yep. Shout out to McMillan Stocks. I know I've been saying this, but it's like really almost ready now. Getting really close. So a couple weeks I should have it before the next match. And I can't wait. Uh, and it's really pretty and it's really blue, which I love. So I can't wait. I'm just, y'all are going to be sick of seeing pictures of it and hearing about my McMillan stock, but I can't wait. Um, Night Force Optics for great glass, Warren scope mounts and bipods. I just mounted a new scope mount on here. It's the Skyline that has the dope card and the level built into it. So super excited about that. Um, Under Industries for your jersey needs. I just ordered my new jersey. Shooters of Augusta and Sharpshooters of Augusta here local to me. Go shoot there. Um, I know Greg Moore who shoots a lot of the pictures uh, in PRS, he was here this week for Masters because he photographs that, and he went and shot at Sharpshooters, so that was awesome. And GSL suppressors, <sighs> it's still in jail. Soon, my eardrums can't wait. Oh, shut up! Your break is just as bad as mine. Sorry, what? But, <laughs> very funny. Can't hear, hearing, can't hear. Um, hopefully, like. Within two months, it'll be out of jail because I'm hearing like 10 months is the going length of time now, but we'll mm -hmm. see. Anyway, hopefully soon, but check out GSL suppressors for awesome ear relief. Yeah. Yeah. The government shutdown didn't hurt, uh, didn't help, uh, supposedly, but 10 months is what I'm hearing. You always hear something crazy like 13 months. You always hear those kind of sneak in there too. Uh, yeah. Cannon, what do you have? I also have Shooters and Sharpshooters of Augusta, uh, my favorite place to go get some practice in. Overwatch Defense for an awesome Cerakote job. PDC Custom for a sick rifle chassis. And NDZ Performance, who just dropped some uh, teaser pictures of their new uh, Gucci Glock slides that I 
have got to get my hands on because they look sweet. Um, they just posted up pictures on Instagram. Wait, what did you say? Gucci Glocks are like vaping of the shooting world or something? Yeah, you know, Gucci Glock, Subarus, vaping, all the same. Hey, you back off my Subaru. Subaru WRX. Not, uh, not my Subaru. There we go. There we go. No, we got some feedback issues coming on, but uh, Bryson, what do you got? Big thanks to Triple Genetics for everything they do for me, providing rifles and everything that um, they do for me and I do for them. Um, shout out to Kenzie's Optics for providing the optics for different guns, especially switching to open. Got all those red dots on everything. Um, Hyperfire for all the triggers and the rifles. Horn scope mounts for their X scale mounts and recovery red dot mounts, as well as. New stuff for PRS and dissident arms for this awesome AL 12. Uh, loving this thing. And, uh, modern smart systems for all my clean gear. Uh, there we go here. Uh, shout out to Mayan. Uh, if you're watching on the YouTube side of things, right below the video, see the yellow subscribe button. Hit that every Tuesday at 9 Eastern. We're doing a new episode of the Shooter's Mindset Show featuring another great guest. All right. Uh, what else I have? The folks over at GSL Technologies. Tandem cross for all your rimfire rifle and pistol needs. I took that out in the backyard uh, earlier this morning. Uh, we did say how to get some uh, some rodents, I saw at least, uh, by the chicken coop. So there we go. Um, email me, the shooters mindset at gmail.com is a good way to do that. Uh, get in touch with me there. Folks over at Gear Nation USA, if you are on the shooters mindset shop, it's hard to keep up with the stock levels um, sometimes. So if you see something that's probably not in stock and you want it, you can always feel free to shoot me a message, an email, hit me up on social media. It's most likely um, Gear Nation does have the shirt in stock. Uh, folks over at Rise Armament for some fancy AR triggers and Terran Tactical Innovations for all their great support of the show and myself over the years. And that'll do it for episode 259 of the Shooter's Mindset. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. We're out of here. <laughs>